Here's a joke of the day for you. This house right behind me has been listed for rent for over one year. <laughs> this house was listed for rent back on May 19th of 2022 for $35,000 a month. Eventually they lowered the price down to $25,000 a month and that is still the current price at $25,000 a month sitting here empty for an entire year. A lot of you guys who are regulars on my channel have been watching me for a while have probably seen me pick on this house before because I've actually followed up on this property more than any other one because it's so insane to see a rental sit empty for a year. That's just not normal, guys. No matter which way you slice it, it's not normal. Everybody has pretty much said the same thing about this. There's probably some sort of tax scheme going on here where they bought this place as an investment property, right? But it's practically just sitting here empty, but it looks like they're trying to rent it so they can write off the losses on their tax return so they pay less in tax. So that could be the strategy here. Honestly, I don't know what else could actually be going on. That seems to be the most likely thing if you ask me, because they paid over $3 million for the place and they listed it for rent shortly afterwards. So whether or not their true intention was to get it rented, I have no idea. But seeing a place empty for a year is just a joke. So have a laugh on me. It is kind of drizzling out here, but hopefully we can make it through without any serious rain. But one thing that's interesting that's happening right now is home sellers are starting to give in. In fact, about 43% of sales during the first quarter of 2023 had some sort of home seller concession attached to that transaction. Now, that can mean a lot of different things. It can mean helping the buyer pay for closing costs. It can mean, you know, paying off a special assessment. If it's a condo, it can mean lowering the price. It can mean, you know, giving them money for a new roof, whatever. It's something towards the closing to benefit the buyer in order to get the property sold, okay? Why is that a big deal? Well, because only a year ago, the number was 25 and a half percent. Well, now it's 43 percent. So the amount of people that are giving concessions to get the property sold is going up. And let's face it, guys, with these prices and interest rates where they're at, now that the 30-year mortgage is above 7% again, home sellers have to do pretty much whatever they can in order to get the place sold because people are not gonna be interested in buying at full price at these rates with nothing in it for them. And they actually gave some reasons on why sellers are offering these concessions right now. You have buyers who are backing out of purchases, okay? Or just sitting out the market altogether because it has become unaffordable. That on top of the fact that supply is still pretty low, then it's not really a big incentive for people to get out there and buy. Even though it's still technically a seller's market because supply is low, the people that are buying right now want to feel like they're getting some sort of a deal, even though they're not, but they need to feel like they are. And that's where these incentives and concessions come in. And here's the other thing, who would have thought? Sellers actually need to sell. What do you know? They need to sell the property, guys. And why is that? Well, because things happen. You have divorces, you have people having bigger families and they have more kids, they need more space. They move for jobs, like that list is endless of why people need to sell. And if they want to get it sold quickly, sometimes they have to give some of these concessions to the buyers to make sure that that does in fact happen. And the next thing is new construction sales. New construction sales have been booming compared to resale properties because the builders have been giving all kinds of incentives for buyers to buy, including lower interest rates, which is a big one right now that really helps people get into properties. If you live in an area where they're building a lot of new homes and you're trying to sell your house, well, you're competing with these new home builders and need to do something in order to get the property sold. Rain's starting to pick up little by little. I'm thinking about calling it quits for now, guys, and resuming at the beach, kind of like I did last time this happened. Don't want to ruin my microphone, then you won't have any nice audio to listen to. Now, obviously, this isn't the case everywhere, just like home prices are not falling everywhere. There are some places where competition is still stiff 
and their properties are getting multiple offers and obviously sellers don't have to give concessions in that environment. This house is somewhat of an anomaly for the area considering it's not a flip and it's not really being marketed as a total teardown like many of the other old homes in the area. Of course you could do that but it's also being advertised as restoring it too. And they're asking 3.2 million. The owner has owned it since 1997. And because they've owned it for so long, their property tax bill is only $6,400 a year. Not bad on a house that's gonna be selling for in the $3 million range. Yep, the rain's picking up guys. I will see you at the beach in a minute. Here we are at the beach, as promised, no sunglasses. Figured I'd finish out the second part of the video. No glasses, don't really need them. It's not that bright out here. I actually love coming out here after the rain. As you guys can see, it's so calm. The air is nice and fresh. Feels good to be out here. And by the way, so many people say in the comments, why don't you just carry an umbrella and you can go in the rain? Here's why, guys. I'm not actually a genius, and I have my second cell phone here as my notes so I can remember what I need to talk about because there's just too many things to talk about and I can't remember everything so I need both hands to shoot these videos. Any volunteers want to come out here and help carry the umbrella for me while I'm doing them in the rain I'll welcome that. <laughs> and just so you know I'm gonna put a lot of your stories in today's video. You guys have been sending me a lot of things and after we cover this seller concession story I'm gonna get to some of the things that you guys have been sending me that I've been wanting to talk about. Now we already talked about how many sellers are giving concessions. In fact, 43% did in the first quarter. On top of the concessions, 15.7% of home sellers dropped their asking price in addition to making concessions. And that is four times as high as it was a year ago at only 4.2% of sellers doing that. 20% of homes sold in the first quarter had a concession and a price cut at the time of sale. And actually 10% of all homes sold in the first quarter had a price cut before the sale, a seller concession, and the house actually sold for less than the asking price. So to me, this is all very good news for home buyers. And I know people are still upset that prices are too high, but I'm gonna share um, an interesting point that one of my viewers pointed out to me that might make you feel a little bit better about home prices. And so one of my viewers, Chris, he sent me this interesting information. If you take a look at this chart here, that even though home prices are still high, they've actually been dropping for about a year now when adjusted for inflation. And this is such an important thing to think about because even though prices still appear high, you cannot forget that the government printed $6 trillion in the span of about a year and a half, guys. So what do you think that amount of money being injected into the economy is going to do? It's gonna make the price of everything cost more and including real estate like we have seen. So one thing you have to remember as a $400,000 house today is not equivalent to a $400,000 house three years ago before all this happened. Simply put, because $400,000 three years ago bought you more, okay? $400,000 was worth more money three years ago than it is today, okay? That's what inflation is. It is a tax. It robs your purchasing power. You can have $100,000 in the bank three years ago and that same $100,000 in the bank today, but the biggest difference, as you probably can tell, is that $100,000 doesn't go as far. Here's the other thing that I think, and a lot of people who watch the channel think, is that the CPI numbers are underreported, right? They're saying inflation's only at 4.9% right now, and we know it's probably at least double that when you look at shadow stats when you calculate inflation how it used to be calculated. What does that mean? It means that this chart is actually even worse in real life then. If home prices adjusted for inflation have been falling for a year, 
at these inflation numbers, if you were actually to use the real inflation numbers, the home prices adjusted for inflation are falling even faster and steeper than what this chart shows. Even though home prices are still expensive because of the amount of inflation that we have had, it's not as bad as it looks. I guess that's really the best way to say it. But I know it's frustrating, guys. I know that, you know, houses that used to cost 250K now cost 400K and so on and so forth. And people are not gonna be happy until prices get anywhere back near these levels. But recognize, even if they do, if prices went back to pre-pandemic levels, then housing would essentially be cheaper than it was pre-pandemic, okay? Because of inflation. So that's really the point that this graph makes. And it was a really interesting thing that I wanted to share here with you guys in the channel, because it's something that I never even really thought of or looked at in this light. But after seeing this, I guess that's somewhat of a glimmer of hope or good news for people who are in the market to buy. Now, here's the next story that was sent to me by Jacob. And he sent me this a while ago. And I've been trying to just wait for the right video to put it in. But since I'm doing like a compilation here of all different stories, I figured this was the right time to share this. And he knows somebody that used to own a condo in this building in Pompano Beach, okay? The building started going through its 60 year recertification because after the 40 year recertification, every 10 years thereafter, it needs to go through another certification to make sure the building's up to spec, especially safety wise. Now this building is a 55 plus building. So lots of elderly people living there on a fixed income. And so they came up with a new special assessment to fix all the things that need to be done with their 60 year recertification. And it came out to about $70,000 in structural problems that needed to be addressed. Obviously some people are on the board and they know about these things before everybody else does. And what happened is a lot of those people ended up selling their units before the special assessment took place and got out while they could before anybody else knew. Well now, because a lot of these elderly people can't afford a 60 or $70,000 special assessment for their unit, they're left with the choice of either sell or they don't pay and the HOA forecloses on them or they have to rent the place out to cover it. And you know, you're in your 70s or 80s thinking you're gonna live here forever and now it's time to move out and let somebody else move in who can pay the bill. So these people are literally getting kicked out of their homes because of this unexpected special assessment. And unfortunately, guys, I think you're gonna see a lot more of this to come in the future as these condo laws take full effect starting in 2025. The buildings that have had, you know, many decades of deferred maintenance and have just haven't been keeping up with the repairs are gonna be in big trouble. So I've been warning you guys about this for months now. Please be careful when you're buying a condo. If you're buying something older, you gotta make sure that they have been keeping up with the repairs. Get the reserve study if they have one and, uh, and figure it out before taking the plunge. Now, so many people always complain too that I say nothing but bad news here on the channel. Give us something that's good, Michael. Okay, I actually have some good news for you today. And this story was sent to me by one of my subscribers, Chris. And he lives in Nevada, but he used to live in Sacramento, California. And this is a pretty cool story. In case you're not familiar with California, they have Proposition 13 over there with your property taxes, which limits the property tax increase there to only 2% per year. Even with that cap on how much property taxes can go up over there, over the span of 20 years, Chris was paying about $6,000 per year on his house in Sacramento. And if it wasn't for Proposition 13, they actually would have been way higher than that. And also being a California resident, you're subject to some of the highest state income taxes throughout the entire country. I believe California, Illinois, and New York 
are the top three worst offenders when it comes to the amount of state income tax that they charge you. So what did Chris do? Well, he ended up moving right across the border to Nevada, to Reno, a couple hours away from Sacramento. He let me in on a little secret that I had no idea about, and chances are you probably never heard of this either. And I don't know if this applies to Nevada entirely or just to the Reno area and the county there, but basically, when you buy a property in this area, especially an older home, the older it is, the better for your property tax bill. Why is that? Well, because in this area, the property taxes are only assessed based on what the property was originally worth back when it was built. So here is the example that Chris gave that is saving him a fortune on property taxes right now. He bought a house there in 2020 for 475,000, okay? house was built in 1942 and his assessed value on the property is only $56,000 and his annual property tax bill is only $757 a year guys his homeowners insurance is only $600 a year and of course being in Nevada his state income tax is zero so Chris says he's saving an estimated $12,000 a year in taxes just by having moved to Nevada a few years ago. Now, I don't know how many of you actually knew about this, but that is an incredible secret that I think Chris let us all in on. And uh, especially if you're living in California, this would be probably something really great to try and take advantage of. And I would even consider doing this, guys. Like, I love California, but I don't wanna pay their taxes. And living right over the border in Reno could be a good compromise. He said they have good medical services in the area, the coast is only a four hour drive. That's not too bad. That's like driving from Miami to Orlando. He even said that the winters aren't as harsh as the Midwest and I grew up in the Midwest. So I've been through some brutal winters, you know, many days well below zero. So it does sound like an interesting proposition and anybody who's looking to save money on property taxes, maybe check this area out. And obviously the caveat here is you have to buy an old house because the assessed value of the house is based on when it was built. So the newer the house, then generally the higher assessed value is going to be. And coincidentally, I have another property tax story from Dennis who also used to live in the Bay Area in California, but his story is a little bit different. He moved to Houston, Texas in order to retire. And even though the cost of living is lower in this area, the property taxes are actually higher than they are in California, percentage wise anyways, based on the value of the property. But he found out after doing some more research, and luckily his real estate agent helped him with this, that in Harris County, where he ended up purchasing, when you turn 65, that you can have zero property taxes over there. The school taxes are frozen when you turn 65, based on the amount that you last paid. And basically what this amounts to for Dennis is he was able to save about 30% off of his monthly mortgage payments now that his property taxes have been pretty much eliminated besides the school tax. And here in Florida, we actually have some similar advantages for senior citizens as well. And he sent me this because he saw my video with my grandparents and told me to mention this to them, which of course I will and maybe they'll even see this video. But here in Florida, once you turn 65, you're eligible for an additional homestead exemption of up to $50,000. And if you already have a homestead exemption, you got the first 50,000 just as the homestead, and then you're eligible for a second homestead exemption just for being 65 or older, providing that your income is below a certain amount, which you have to check with your county to see if you meet this requirement. In some areas, you may also be eligible to pay no property tax at all, just like Dennis, depending on where you live. Because if you own a property that's worth $250,000 or less, and it's been your primary residence for the last 25 years, plus you're 65 years and older, and you meet the income requirement, then you can literally pay zero property tax here in Florida. I think in today's day and age, especially in the future, it's gonna be practically impossible for people to hit that threshold, mainly because of the property value rule. And maybe they'll end up raising this eventually because today it's not very realistic to have a house that's only worth $250,000 or less in Florida. So hopefully they'll eventually raise that to what the median home price is today 
and that way people who buy their house today for say 400,000 in Florida and live in it for 25 years and once you turn 65 then you'll be eligible for the zero property tax exemption but I'm not going to count on it we'll see but something interesting to know about aging gracefully and uh, paying less taxes as you get older. Personally, I think if you're living on a fixed income as a retiree and you're 65 or older, all states should exempt you from paying property taxes as long as you meet the income requirements, guys. If you're not rich, you're living on a fixed income, like I said, then to help people out, they should be eliminating property taxes once you get into this age bracket. So let me know what you guys think about that. But if you are getting close to 65, check out your state to see if they have any advantages. You can Google something along the lines of like the name of your state and senior property tax exemption, something like that, to see if this would be available where you live. Now the final story was sent to me by Steve and he's always sending me a bunch of stories, so thank you Steve. This was talking about just how bad the layoff situation is so far in 2023 because I don't think most people realize the scale of where things are at right now. For example, in 2022, you had a little over a thousand tech companies that laid off about 154,000 people. And that is a lot of lost jobs, but that is nowhere near the scale of layoffs that we've been seeing so far in 2023. Because just since the first quarter of 2023, there has literally been 199,000, practically 200,000 job losses just in the tech sector alone, okay? That's not including any other industries, and that's just massive, guys. When you look at how many layoffs that we're seeing right now across the board, this is troubling, okay? People think that unemployment's not gonna go up, that these job numbers are gonna stay rosy forever. It's not gonna be the case. We've already talked about time and time again how one of the Fed's goals is to make unemployment rise to at least 5%, if not more. Right now, with it only at 3.5%, I think it was something in the in order of like another 1.5 million jobs or something need to be lost by the end of this year to meet that goal. And if it doesn't happen, they're going to continue with the rate hikes until it does happen. And as if that's not bad enough, a lot of these tech companies that are hiring people right now that do need help, they're only paying about 70% of what people were making before the layoffs started, they're seeing their pay shrink. And the reason why that's a problem is because a lot of these tech jobs are based in very expensive areas. And the people who earn these high tech salaries are a huge part of the economy, guys, in the sense that they make a lot of money, so they spend a lot of money. So spending a lot of money is important to keep the wheels greased in a healthy economy. And so if some of America's highest paid people are starting to lose their jobs and getting their salaries cut when they find a new job, what kind of effect do you think that's going to have on the economy over the next couple of years? I think it's going to be terrible. I think you're going to see even more layoffs. I think you're going to see people spending money start to completely dry up as people max out their credit cards and blow all the money from their HELOC loans with whatever they're doing with that stuff. And down she goes from there. That's what I think is going to happen. Feel free to share your predictions on this. So if you ever have any stories to send me, guys, please feel free. Shoot me an email. You can go to the About section in my channel, and you'll find my email there. You can send me the stories that you find. Sometimes I use them. Sometimes I don't. The more interesting it is, the more likely it is that I will share it here. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to wait for my next one to come out, check this video out right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.